So, thank you. Um, I will take about 15 minutes before your lunch, so I'm sorry if it's too boring. Uh, but I'll be talking a bit about, indeed, the science of persuasion, a bit about skateboarding, and maybe more about what I think is science in general. Because to me, the goal of science is to understand and predict the world around us. So we want to know, for example, uh, why do trees grow? Or why do things fall down? And how fast do they actually hit the ground when they go down? Or why do we do the things that we do? Now, I'm particularly interested in that latter question. So why do people do the things they do? As it was just announced, I'm a skateboarder, uh, which means that next to the obvious that I ride skateboards, uh, I also wear baggy pants and skateboard brand t-shirts. When I first started skateboarding, however, I had a really hard time determining which of the t-shirts was the right shirt. We had all kinds of shirts. To me, they looked very similar. Uh, however, some were correct and some were no-go areas. So even nowadays, I find myself buying 40 euro t-shirts, which I do not think are any better than the 5 euro ones, but I just know that they are the correct t-shirt. Um, this made me realize that we all do things and we buy things not just because of some price quality trade-off, but rather because of a lot of other ar arguments. Um, basically, more generally, we perform behaviors um, because other people do them, or because some expert recommends us to do them, or because it's our last chance to do them. So, despite the end goal of what we're doing, we have a lot of reasons, kind of external reasons, that make us perform the behaviors that we perform. And I'll call these influence strategies, and I think these are what we study when we study the science of persuasion. Now, what I just announced as kind of my personal goals of science, so understanding and predicting the wor world around us, uh, I found out that these are two totally different things. If you look at physics, then over the last, uh, over 100 years, actually ever since Newton, physicists have very well been able to predict the behavior of medium-sized objects. So hold a tennis ball up like this, and I drop it, they can tell you exactly with which speed it will reach the floor. However, the understanding as to why this tennis ball is actually attracted to the floor has changed a few times over the course of history. Now, if you look at persuasion, you see a different image. What we see there is that, for example, for the fact that people follow authority advices, we have, well, I know at least, over 20 explanations, theories, as to why we do these things. So we have a lot of understanding. However, we actually suck at predicting. So I have no clue how you, in the end, are going to respond to an authority argument. Now, I believe that we suck at predicting uh, because we are actually borrowing some of the methods from physics and other sciences, and we're using them in the social sciences to predict human behavior. Um, the main problem that we have is that what we're examining and what we're basing our knowledge on is the knowledge of average effects, and we use it to predict individual level behavior. Now, what do I mean by average effects? If you look at physicists, and they wanted to quantify how fast this ball was actually hitting the floor, basically what they did was initially just time, you know, take a stopwatch time, how long it takes. Now, if you do it two times, you'll find that you'll get, you know, slightly different measurements. I don't know, you had some itch in your stopwatch finger, something went wrong, took a bit longer, you know, you were a bit faster. However, if you take lots and lots of these measurements, and you average over them, you zoom in on kind of a stable mean, stable average, and you actually zoom in on the 9.8 meters per square second that we all know from high school physics. So basically, averaging over a lot of measurements allows us to quantify the effect of gravitation on Earth. Social scientists, by and large, do the same things when they study persuasion. Basically, what we do, for example, if we want to know the effect of authority, one thing that's frequently done is we ask you to rate a product. Say, I present a book to you, I ask you how willing are you to buy this book. Next, I'll take another person, present the same book, ask how willing are you to buy this book. However, this time I tell you that it's endorsed by an authority. Some expert writer really liked the book. Now what you find, if you do this for a large group of people, so basically half of you just get the book, ask your willingness to buy, the other half gets the book, ask willingness to buy, but also say that it's endorsed by an authority. What we often find is that consistently, this half will be more willing to buy the book, significantly. 
more willing to buy, buy the book. And then we say we have quantified the effect of authority on people. Now that would actually be true if we all responded the same way to authority arguments, which is true for the tennis balls that the physicists were dropping down. However, we do not all respond to authorities the same way. And to me it's kind of striking that actually the first experiment, or one of the most famous experiments, into the effects of authorities actually already showed this. So over 50 years ago, Professor Milgram set up an experiment and the bottom line of the experiment was that he randomly recruited people from the street, people like you and me, and put them in a situation in which he asked them to pull a lever and after pulling the lever, ostensibly, somebody in the room next door would be killed by an electric shock. Now he set up the experiment, you know, made it a nice story, but in the end, purely by the power of authority, by being there in his white lab coat, he got 65% of people randomly recruited from the street to ostensibly kill another human being. Now that result obviously was shocking, shocked the world, and it's also the result that causes us to have toothbrush commercials with people wearing white lab coats. Um, the same result, however, shows that even though you try to get the effect of, of authority as high up as possible, you still find that 35% of the people do not comply to the advice that was given by authority. Now, this is exactly what causes our failure to predict. And I'll give you an example of how this would actually play out if you do it in physics. And for this I brought Thomas. Uh, Thomas is my little nephew, he's two and a half years old, and he lives in France. And a few months ago I was visiting him and my brother, where he lives, and we went out to a fair. And at the fair Thomas got what he's holding in his hand, a gas-filled balloon. And we walked around the fair for a bit, and we ended up at a stand where they were selling music instruments. And one of the things they had there on display was a drum kit. Now Thomas wanted to play the drums. So basically he wanted to take place on a drum stool and play the drums a bit. He was allowed to, however he's quite well raised. So the first thing he wanted to do was kind of orderly put away his balloon. So he took his both hands, took his balloon, put it on the floor next to the drum stool. Obviously the thing went up and he looked kind of puzzled. However he was also determined. So again, with both hands, he grabbed the balloon, put it on the floor next to him, kind of holding it down there. Now by now we actually had you know, a small crowd of people watching this scene and watching this little kid trying to push down this balloon onto the floor where we wanted it to stay. And people were smiling at this because what he was doing, of course, was overgeneralizing the idea of the fact that things go down when you release them. However, it's not that weird that he was overgeneralizing this. This guy has been walking around the earth for two and a half years and everything that he has ever held in his hand, once released, would actually go down. What I think was more surprising is the fact that after seeing the thing go up twice, he settled for the fact that it would go up, just left it hanging there from the rope and started playing his drum kit. Um, now, so this is exactly, I think, what we are doing if we're talking about and thinking about the effects of persuasion on people. Now a while ago, about nine months ago, Dean Eccles and I at Stanford University set an up an experiment where we try to quantify the effects of authorities on people. Basically, we did the same experiment that I was just describing to you, so we offered books to people and asked their willingness to buy. However, what we did slightly different than a lot of other studies in this regard uh, is that we had people rate multiple books. So we had individuals and we had them rate books that were either endorsed and books that were not endorsed by authorities. And we measured their willingness to buy the books. Then what we did was we tried to predict the willingness to buy basically the last book that people saw. We tried to do this in two ways. One, we tried to predict their willingness to buy that book based on the average effect. So based on how other people responded to authority arguments. Second, we tried to predict an individual's response, an individual's willingness to buy a certain book based on his or her previous responses to authority. And guess what? We were actually way better at predicting people's responses to persuasion when we kept track of how they responded individually over time instead of 
taking the average effect over a group of other people to be predictive of what people would do. Um, now let me wrap this up a bit. Um, this t-shirt I'm actually not wearing because some expert skateboarder wears the brand. Even though, on average, the brand definitely sells more if a lot of good skateboarders wear it. I'm wearing this t-shirt because a lot of my friends endorse this brand. Now, this letter strategy called social proof consistently works pretty well for me. Nowadays, through technology, as the previous speaker was also referring to, we can actually measure individual level responses to persuasion. So if you browse a website, we'll see you respond to authority arguments, to social proof, to scarcity, and a whole host of other influence strategies. And we can measure at an individual level how you respond to these strategies. From there, we can make a profile, a profile that describes which influence strategies make you tick, which ones are you swayed by. And from there, we can actually predict human responses to pers persuasion better than ever. And I hope that if we can actually predict human behavior accurately, then maybe we can also get to a valid understanding of persuasion. Thank you.